Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. When studying heredity, one of the most common things to mess up is the terms gene and allele. They're, it's really easy for somebody to say one when they mean the other. So let me first define what a gene is, so then I can explain exactly what an allele is in that context. So a gene is a particular region of your DNA that controls a specific trait. Examples of genes are, uh, there's a gene on one of your chromosomes that controls whether or not some muscles are arrayed across your tongue at a particular time during fetal development. One version of that gives you the ability to roll your tongue. Mm. A different version of that gives you the inability to roll your tongue. Yeah. Another example of a gene is a gene design, uh, guiding the uh, makeup of your earlobe. Some people have a version of that gene that gives what's called a detached or sometimes free earlobe shape. Other people have a version of that same gene that controls the earlobe shape that creates this attached earlobe shape. We call these different versions of a gene alleles. Right? So it's kind of like saying genes are like articles of clothing and alleles are different brands. This is a shirt. There are various versions of the shirt gene, those various versions or brands are the different alleles. I have the shoe gene. Right now I'm using the dress shoe allele. If I went out running, I would put on the sneaker version or allele for that particular shoe. I don't talk about the shoe allele of the shirt gene. I don't wear those. All right. Now, something else to understand is that alleles can be dominant or they can be recessive. A dominant allele is one that will show itself in a cell or in a person's body. So, for example, the detached earlobe, the free earlobe, is the dominant allele for this particular gene, for the earlobe gene. Whereas the attached earlobe shape, that allele is recessive, which means you don't see its effects unless it's paired up with an identical attached earlobe allele. Now, when you're naming alleles, what you do is you pick a letter that represents the gene. Say, for example, if we're talking about earlobes, I'll use the letter E. Then you use the capital letter of that letter for the dominant. So I'll call this the big E allele, and then I'll use this little E allele for the attached earlobe. All right. So that's what an allele is. If you can keep in mind that an allele is a version of a gene, then this becomes a lot easier. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here, or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're gonna be doing a lot of work. You're gonna be bleh, starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>